Hello, hello, hello. Testing, testing. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. The world, the big bad world out there. Alright, I can see you guys. Alright. So, go ahead and start. Okay, welcome everybody. Um, my name is Jonathan Sharp. I am one of the, um, the system designers here at ArenaNet. Um, I focus a lot on the PvP and stuff like that. A lot of people call me Chap instead of Jonathan. It's kind of my nickname and whatnot, so you may know me as Chap instead of Jonathan. Um, today we're going to be walking you guys through some combat stuff. Uh, I've got my buddy John Peters with me. He's one of the other system designers. Uh, focuses a lot on the combat and the skills and the classes and that kind of stuff. So we'll be walking you through the game, showing you some stuff, uh, answering some questions that you guys might have. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. We're going to try to... I'll watch for your questions and I'll play the game and I'll try to communicate with John and watch the stream all at the same time. So this is this is some fun multitasking stuff right here. So let's see how this goes. Um, so we're going to go ahead and transition into game. Let me know if we have any feedback here or if it's sound is off. Ruby's going to let me know. So I'm going to switch over into that and see how we're doing. So John's actually getting killed while I do that. So let's get John up real quick. All right, let's get John up. John, stop dying. Stop dying. Let's tell him stop dying. Let's just kill this. He'll come off of it with a res. All right, now he's up. All right, so as you can see, we are just in the middle of this area right here, and um, we are. I will show you, John. Stop, Lord, Lordy mercy. All right, so we're just going to show you guys how to die apparently today. Um, so I hope you guys wanted to see some devs get their asses kicked in their own game because that's what you're getting right now. So uh, we are going to focus on this guy. We're seeing we to get him down. We are both down right now. So if you guys have not played the game or if you're not used to it. Uh, we basically just res off of the uh, the opponent we just killed. Um, when you die in Guild Wars 2, you actually go into a down state. And uh, when, when you're in that down state, you can still fight. And if you can get a kill while you're down there, you can actually get back up, uh, which is what just happened right there. So he and I look like we're okay now. We've kind of recovered. Um, what's happened here is that we've kind of pushed into an area, and we've got stuff behind us as, it was as well as in front of us. So we need to be careful and uh, not get flanked, which is what I'm telling John right now in chat. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm on a Mesmer right now, as you guys can see. I've got a pistol and a scepter in one hand, and then in the other, I've got my staff. And with the staff, I'm able to do a lot of conditions and cute stuff like that. And we are fighting some guys who are like, we, we got some, um, as you can see, we've got an Agalotl that we're dealing with here. And we're pushing into this little bitty village that we've kind of just found uh, to give you guys a sense of where we are. We are north and east of one of the starting areas. Uh, this is where the, um, the Asura would have started. So we are up in uh, the Brisbane Wildlands. We are um, close to the Dredge area. They have, a, they have a lot of caves to the east of where we are. And we are just fighting over here. So let's see if we can. John's trying to kite this guy. Got a lot of damage. I'm going to go ahead and shatter. So the, the Mesmer, the way that it works, is I can summon a lot of illusions. And with my F skills up here, which is F1 through F4 on your keyboard, you can shatter your illusions to get different effects. Um, so right now, what I'm going to be able to do is, uh, we've got a guy behind us, watch, watch that, John. Um, I'm going to talk to him, even though he can't hear me. He's in another room in the building, so it's going to be kind of funny if you guys figure out how silly we are just talking to each other, even though he can't hear me. Um, so what we're doing is we're talking in game with these, we're calling targets, and we're letting each other know when we need to back off, when we need to go forward, that kind of stuff. Um, so we're trying to do the best we can without being able to actually hear each other right now. So... John's going to focus that down. It should go down pretty soon. Yeah, and he's going to res off of it. All right, cool. Now we got to deal with the next one. So let's call that as a target. John's going to jump on that. Um, you'll also notice that I have this bar right here. Um, and this bar is going to be what allows me to evade. And you'll see if, if you see me dodging backwards like this, I've evaded. But it takes about half my bar to do that. Actually, exactly half my bar. So I can get two of those. And it comes back pretty slowly. So you've got to be really strategic on when you're using those. Um, it can get you out of a really big hit. It can get you. You can get some more space with it if you need to um, get some distance between you and somebody else. Uh, you can do that. I've also got a teleport skill here, which I'm about to use. Get out of dodge. Um, then I'm going to make sure that we keep more distance with some people. We're just running right now because we've basically pulled a whole bunch of stuff. So we're going to throw down some AOEs. Um, let's see if we can get John to pull up onto this hill. Move, move is what I tell him. Do not fight that fight. We're going to get killed. Let's get to a hill and recover. All right, so 
John is John's John's just yeah, John John died. John we we have just left John behind. We we are not the Marines here at Arena Net. If people go down, we will leave you behind. So watch for that. <laughs> so he's probably gonna have to come back. Let's see if he's uh, his corpse is gone. So he's already back at a uh, redirector. He'll be coming back. I'm gonna have to solo this thing by myself, but it's all right. I think we can make it. I think we're okay. Um, I'm going to use this uh, utility skill right here, which is going to summon some illusions for me, and then I'm going to shatter them immediately, which is a cool little way to spike if you've uh, if you're trying to learn how to play the mesmer. Um, my utilities are going to be the mirror images, which is just going to summon two clones for me, which I can use to smack some people around. I can also use my blink, which is going to let me move around the map if I need to. It's uh, going to let me jump in and out of combat. And then I've also got feedback, which is good against ranged uh, creatures, because it's going to put up a dome around them, and it's going to reflect their shots right back to them, which is really, really powerful. So we're going to regroup. And let's see, I'm going to look at my map, and I see John coming, so he's heading north and west towards me. Let's try the cave, I said. We like to role play here at Arena Net too, so. All right, we're going to move in. Sure, let's try the event. We'll see how this goes. We smell different. Oh, he's gonna tell us how to do this event. Well, what do I need to do, I say? Yes, go with my friends, watch them. Not the smartest need help. He's great, he's a little bit slow. You help now, see you soon. All right, cool, let's see how this goes. Looks like we're gonna have to escort these guys in here. Go luck, have fun. Go for it, Holmes. We're getting a little bit of uh, some role playing going on right here. RP, man, I tell him. All right. So. <laughs> he flexes, and I say, yes, that's, that's hot. That's hot. Go, little script. Do your thing. All right, and he's just, all right, we're going to sip some juice while he's setting off this event. Hmm, some good minute, man. All right, here we go. We're going to try pushing in this cave. Uh, so we're going to have these fireflies in here. They're not as powerful as what we were just dealing with. They're kind of a known quantity. They're not going to um, have uh, the range and the evasion we were getting out of the worms, so this fight will be a little bit easier, probably. The thing we got to be careful of is they do kind of swarm in packs sometimes. So we're going to have to be careful with that. So I'm going to use my four skill here, which is going to summon this duelist. And it's just going to unload just tons of damage on this guy. So I'm going to go ahead and daze him, kind of get some distance with him. Then I'm going to throw confusion onto them. Now confusion says anytime he uses a skill while he has confusion on him, he takes damage. So you want to you make sure that you're going to time your confusion such that it hits when a creature is actually trying to take a swing at you to get, to get more damage out of your confusion. Um, John is... Up at the entrance still. We're gonna head back out and see where Jay went. Oh, uh, so you can see the symbol on the map right here. He's pushed all the way down to try to do this event. So let's make sure that we're gonna keep pace. So he's heading over in this way. Let's hope we don't die doing this. I, I've not been in this area in a while, so if I die and look stupid, I'm sorry to everybody watching. All right, we're gonna try to get across. We've drawn some aggro from these cute little tigers in the water. We're gonna try to catch up with Jay. All right, so we're gonna fight these mans over here. Ba bam, ba bam, ba bam, ba bam. That's what we say. So also, I can't really hear the sound. You guys can hear it. So if you if you see me making my own sound effects, um, understand that these are all copyrighted by Jonathan Sharp. You cannot steal these sound effects. And um, yeah, let's see how this goes. All right, so we're actually gonna get a few more guys up. We've got two guys at once, and then you see behind me, I've got a golem behind me that I need to deal with. So we're gonna take this down to John should rev off of it. Cool, let's go ahead and do this. Get behind this guy. We're just gonna summon a whole bunch of stuff and throw it at him, bam, 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 bam. So what we're doing here is we're shattering these illusions as soon as we summon them. So we're kind of just throwing them away. Now he's gonna try to go into a defensive stance, but we're gonna blind him. And then as soon as he comes out, He's gonna go down to yep, yeah, he's down. So John's really getting his, his butt kicked a little bit, but he's tanking kind of for us. Um, John's actually on a tank elementalist right now, which might sound kind of crazy if you haven't played Guild Wars 2, but it actually does work. So that's what he's on right now. So that's why he's up in the front taking a lot of damage while I am the glass cannon right now. Um, earlier we had it switched and we had our specs different, so we're 
We're just having more fun right now with him up front. So he's going to take this guy down. Confusion should kill that guy if he will go ahead and swing once. There we go. Uh, yeah. Okay, nice. All right, so we've got three of these little scribs with us still. We're going to stay on this. Um, this guy's really running a long way away. Let's, let's not do that. John, John's down again. Poor Jay. Sorry, Jay, if you can hear me. I'm going to push back in and help John. I'm going to switch it back out. I'm going to dodge out of that AOE. Get some vulnerability on him. John's going to res again. So we've got a golem with this right here. I'm going to swatch over. Okay, so I have a two skill on my staff, which you just saw me jump to. This is going to allow me to jump backwards, and then it's going to summon a clone that casts the wave of uh, the wind of chaos. The wind of chaos is going to put random conditions on people. So what you can do is if you really feel like you're in a, in a really bad spot as a, as a mesmer and you have a staff out, you can quickly swap over to your, your staff and then press two, and you'll teleport away from your opponent. So you could do that as well as you could have up your, if you have your blink ready, you could do this and then you can actually blink behind you. Now I have the camera reversed right now. So you could do that and then let go of your reverse camera button. Um, this is all kind of slow, but it, in real time you can actually gain a lot of distance. It's almost like having four dodges in a row um, between actually using your dodges, your phase retreat, and then your blink. It's going to get you a lot of space. So if you're, if you're in trouble as a, as a mez, uh, you kind of want to just set the distance. You're not really tanky with this kind of setup, but you can really set distance again. You can zone your opponents really, really well with that. So you want to do that kind of stuff. All right. Let's just hit this guy with a chaos. Oh, that's, we got a lot of damage there. So I threw out a chaos storm, which just puts random stuff, um, conditions onto opponents. And um, with that AOE, we're able to really, really put out a lot of damage. Uh, but we need people to sit inside of it. So sometimes you got to put them out there and then you got to kind of tank it a little bit so that they stay in the chaos storm with you. All right. Okay. I am, I'm being told we have questions. So here we go. I'm going to, again, multitask. And let's see if John dies while I do this. Because it's, it's not only possible, it's very probable. Question. What weapon sets am I using? So again, we have a scepter and a pistol. And the other set I have right now is a staff. And you'll see me a lot of times open up with my um, scepter and my pistol, as you can see. And then what I'll do is I'll switch over to my staff when I feel that I need it. Um, it's got more AOE to it. It can deal with more targets more easily. So a lot of times I'll save that. And I've also got the ability to teleport backwards, as we said. So if I'm in a fight right now, for instance, and I'm really worried, what I can do is quickly just do this, and then do this, and then do this, to go behind myself, and then I can also swap over, hit two, and then dodge, and then dodge. So you can get, you can put a lot of distance between yourself and your opponent. So a lot of times I'll start off in my scepter and pistol. These guys, we're just doing a lot of damage here. It's just too much damage really for them to deal with. So we kind of pushed up the hill a little bit. All right, so we're just going to stay with our script mans so we can do this little event right here. And they've pushed on a little bit. It's like one of them went down. Gonna res him. And we've got aggro behind us over here. So let's go ahead and hit this guy. So we talked about being able to throw projectiles back at people. Let's do that. Let's do this. So he's going to be in there. If he throws out any projectiles, they're just going to bounce right back and hit him, which is just all kinds of kinky and cool because that's just awesome, right? Because we're a mesmer, so we're going to use his abilities against him. All right. Looks like we've lost all of our script up here, so we're going to start resing these guys up a little bit. Chat, can you just touch? Yes, I can discuss traits and builds. So I'm, I'm in one of the lower areas, so you won't see. Um, I don't have a ton of trade skills unlocked. Um, but what you will notice is that I've got <coughs> um, 11 right now. I can put one more in. Um, right now what I've done is I've gone into Domination, which is going to increase my power as well as my condition duration, which uh, has some synergy with just the straight damage from um, the damage that I do. And then it also increases the, the duration on all these conditions that I cause with my staff, as well as the, um, the on my Scepter. I've also got Confusion here, which is really important to increase that duration as well. And then the thing that I've taken right now out of all the traits that I have available to me right now at Tier 1 is Mind Rat causing 20% more damage, which is called Mental Torment. So what I do with that is then I also have this, which is going to summon more clones for me. So I can quickly summon clones, two of them onto a target, and then I can do Mind Rack. And as you'll notice, Mind Rack does more damage based off how many illusions that I actually have out. So that's my ability to kind of spike people and spike damage down. Um, on targets that I really need to get them down quickly. Mind Rack is also a great way to do area of effect damage, which is why you'll see me using that a lot of times. 
thank you for the questions, guys. Thank you for Ruby and her help. She is kind of being the, the arbiter of the questions. All right, so we've got all four of our little script mans up. All right, script mans. Do it, script mans. All right, so now they know what we want. We want them to go up this hill. And as you can see, there's not really much here at the top of this hill, but once we crust it, yeah, we're going to find some more mans that we need to deal with. So I'm going to stay with the script and try to help them focus down some damage. They're doing a little bit, but they don't do a ton. I think this is one of those places, you know, where they kind of expect us to do all the work. They're just going to take all the credit. It's just one of those, right? So he's got a, he's got a, a ranged weapon, so we're going to throw that at him and let him have fun with that. We've already lost another one of our poor little script mans. Oh, we got a golem right on us, so we're going to teleport out of the way. Saw me blink. Let's get some distance on this guy. Go ahead and hit him with the daze. Let's put some confusion on him. All right, now we're going to go ahead and throw this out. This is a two skill, which is going to blind. Now what I did here was you can actually just use this skill and then block an incoming attack. You can also press it again while you're blocking to cancel it to throw out a blind. And a blind is going to make somebody miss their next attack. So it's, it's a good way to, to, to either reactively or um, reactively have defense uh, against a single target. All right, so another question. Several so questions about tank elements list. How does it work? So right now, John is basically in dagger dagger. Um, the spec that he has on right now, he's got a lot of stuff put into toughness. A lot of his uh, points, like we just showed you for my trait build, he's doing the same thing, but he's putting toughness in. And he's got dagger dagger. So he actually wants to be up in people's faces. See, like he's going to get right up in their faces, and he just doesn't even care. Like he's he's just he's going aggro on these people. Which if you if anybody has met John Peters at a at a con or anything like that, that's just that's John Peters to a T. He loves to get in there and mess them up. So you can see all the damage that he's taking. Like these guys are both almost down, but John's still up. So we've just been, we've taken two people down. He took all the aggro for us. Took a lot of the damage that was coming off of those two guys. And he's at it again with the script. So I'm going to focus on this one over here while he deals with those over there. So I'm watching his character as well as mine to make sure he's okay. Looks like he's going to be fine. And if we get these guys close enough and John goes down, we can still um, come back up if he goes down. We can still get him back up. So even if, as long as we get him close to down, we should be okay. The thing we've got to be careful about is that if we get too many things adding at once, they can start to CC us and start to control us, and it's going to help us, um, or it's going to prevent us from helping each other. So yeah, he's right now is on a dagger dagger. All right. Oh yes. All right. <laughs> They're just so cute. <laughs> All right, so we're going to carry these back with these guys. We're, we're just going to make sure that they don't die. We've got another golem back here. Yep, we have a golem in front of us too. All right, this should be pretty easy because it's it's by itself. It's not going to be able to do too much to us. Um, it does have self-repair though, which means we might have to spike him a little bit. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and blind him out of that. Oh, and we missed it. All right, let's get some confusion on this guy. Yeah, so this guy you'll notice too that he's also got the veteran, which means he's going to be a little bit more buff than everything else that's around us right now. So let's put some confusion on him. It's confusion again, he'll take damage. So you see that the purple stuff come up every time he swings. That's him taking confusion damage, which is really good for us. So if he's going to stay there like that, let's get some AoEs on him. Just let him sit inside of that. Now our, our Chaos Storm, you can see all the, the, the dots we're putting on. We've got bleeding, we've also got burning that we're putting on him. So you'll see that he's ticking damage. That's all of our damage over time skills starting to add up. So he should be able to go down pretty quick. And then we can just shatter for good measure and make sure he goes down. There we go. All right. Another question. We're going to have to revive these guys back up. Will there be more for the SPVP in the future, say, arenas like Guild Wars 1? Uh, yeah, we will be trying some other stuff. Um, right now, we are focused on getting a lot of the features in that help support the game overall. Um, so what we're, we're focused on right now is, you know, getting the, the paid tournaments up and running for you guys and getting some other key features up and running that are going to help the game grow as an eSport. Um, so those are the things that we're kind of focused on right now. We have more questions coming. Wow, they're just going to start streaming in, which is fine. I just, I might die. So as long as you guys don't mind me dying. Or I can just run away like a, like a security cat. Maybe I can just do that. Yeah, so let's just let John die in there with all that. Yeah, poor, poor John. We're, we're kind of selfish there, aren't we? Focus this, Jay. Yeah, you can't even hear me. All right, so he got to revive off of that. Whoa. 
All right, so you'll notice one thing too. As long as a mesmer has a lot of coverage and I can use my illusions and I can make sure that people are, you know, keeping their distance from me and stuff like that, I'm going to be okay. Um, I'm probably going to die here trying to get John up. Um, as, long, as soon as there's a lot of area of effect stuff, it's harder as a mesmer to, to make sure that you can get off your illusions when you want them and use them to the effect that you want to use them. Um, so one of the things you have to be careful of as a mesmer, and there we, we obviously pulled away too much stuff and weren't, weren't really watching, which is my fault, John, if you're listening. Um, you have to be careful because if it gets really, really crowded in there, um, a lot of my illusions will die before I can use the effects that I want to on them. So that's one of those things you really got to be cautious for. Um, oh, wow, some more questions. They want to know about the blog post. Uh, the blog post we actually has been sent off to be edited, um, so it's written, and now people will be looking at that and then editing it for us and putting it into different languages. Where did I get my hat? <laughs> I got my hat at uh, the Bellevue Mall uh, at Nordstrom. Uh, they have a fine selection of, of hats for gentlemen. Uh, I would highly recommend it if you are in the market for a hat. Um, if you see if you see um, Teresa, tell Teresa that I said hello because she helped me find a hat. So. All right, we're back and running. All right, let's rock. All right. So again, we're not going to aggro these guys. There's just no sense in fighting these guys right now if we can help it. All right, how do I? So this is a great question. The question is, um, can I talk about how I set up my keyboard? Um, so that's a great question. So as you'll notice, we we normally just have one, two, three, four, and five, which are skills one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten are things that uh, usually exist on the numbers 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Now what I do, when I, uh, is aside from just falling down on my face when trying to move down slightly steep hills, is I like to move 6 to Q, I like to move um, 7 to E, and then what I, I just use like Q, E, and R to put everything right at that, that left hand so that nothing has to move. My left hand can stay where it is at all times and I don't have to move it for anything, uh, which is what I like to do. So. In a second, once we're done with this fight, I will actually just pull up my key bindings and show them to you guys. Because that's actually a really, really important question. Um, what I like to do, so let's show you guys that real quick. So I'm going to go to options, and then I'm going to go to user controls. All right, let's put John up. Uh, let's do this. So we're going to hit that guy. So now, okay, now he can't hit us anymore with range stuff because it's going to go right back and hit him in the face. So we feel clever and smart now, having done that. And he feels stupid and dumb. So that's what it's, that's the life of Mesmer right there. All right, so let's do this again. Options. And John's just going to keep aggroing stuff. All right, so as you can see, I move, I, move, I do this with my skills up here, uh, which puts 7, 8, 9, and 0 on the, the left side of the keyboard, where it stays closer to the 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 that I have by default. And then you'll notice that I have my elite skill bound to G. Uh, when I look behind myself, I have that bound to C, so you'll notice me doing that sometimes to check aggro behind me. It's just C that I'm using right there on my keyboard. Another thing that I'm doing is I will have target nearest enemy bound to my left shift, so that if I ever need to grab a target quickly, I can be over here, I can just grab it really quickly with my left shift if I need to. And that's how I do that. So we're going to keep this guy inside of this. So let's give him some chaos armor to think about. Wow, we have three or four more questions. Can you talk about John? Stay with me. All right. Cool. So we're gonna have another goal come up. Um, what you want to do when you're doing your key bindings like this? Um, F is still F to interact, which is the default. I haven't changed that. What you want to do is you want to make sure that you are keeping your left hand as still as you can, so that you're not moving it around. Um, if you guys have played any kind of like RTS stuff, like StarCraft. Um, you'll notice that a lot of the high-level high, high level players, they'll actually start taking things off of their keyboard to make sure that they never, never have a button that they mispress. Um, it's kind of the same thing here. I don't ever want to have to like leave the, le the WASD config to go hit 7, 8, 9 on my keyboard and then come back and then miss something uh, as I come back. So you want to make sure that your left hand is pretty much staying still the whole time so that you don't miss a, miss a press uh, in the middle of a fight. That's really important. You'll also notice that, um, wow, we lost all these dudes. We are pretty bad at this game. All right. So we've actually got a golem right behind us, John. Don't, don't pull anybody else, bud. Don't pull anybody else. Hey, he's going to pull everybody. Okay, cool. Leroy. All right. All right, that's not too bad. Yeah, I'm also going to... 
So as I'm fighting right now, I'm watching this right here, and I'm watching for the aggro over here that I expect to come out. And I'm also checking every now and then you'll notice me. John's already down again. Let's do this. I'm just going to have to leave Jay. So I'm going to try to keep these guys in this. There we go. So they're going to have... It's going to be hard for them to get out of that. All right. All right, we got to just leave Jay. we got to leave. So again, let's get some more distance. I'm going to die to this guy on my left, I think. All right, so I just summoned another two illusions really quickly, and then I use my F4, which is going to give me the ability to have distortion for a couple of seconds. So what I'm trying to do is get enough distance. There we go, and i gotta, I got to fear off that chaos storm. Oh. And I'm going to go down. Okay, so what you want to do with the Mesmer, as you saw, like, in all the situations, if, if I was focused better and, you know, really paying attention, if you get the, the right button press at the right time, you get used to your skills, you get used to the evasion, all that kind of stuff, you can get out of some really hairy spots with good skill. Um, if you're just smashing your buttons, then your skills will not be there for you when you need them. Um, so you want to be really, really careful about that stuff, which ties into the question about the keyboard bindings. You want to really make sure that you're really good at your... Your, your keyboard bindings, you feel safe with them, you feel comfortable with them, that you don't have to think about when I need, when I need to, to put a defensive skill out. It's, it's my seven, it's my mirror images, so I can just quickly, if I'm playing just that quickly on two, two button presses, I can throw out this and then I can shatter them to get distortion, which is what you saw me doing there. You want to get that to be muscle memory for you. Um, it's the same thing too, if I, if I needed to retreat on somebody. What you can do is you can actually start this skill, if you want to, with ground targeting on, and then I can swap over to my review or my, my reverse mirror basically as if I was driving a car and then quickly hit it. So I can really quickly with somebody, I can do something like this, then swap and then let go of the button again, which is what you saw me do earlier. Um, it's just hard to talk about doing it as I'm doing it, but that's that's kind of the stuff that I'm doing with my key bindings as we're playing. You want it to be the case that you don't have to think about the buttons. And uh, what I a lot of times will try to do is my strongest defensive skill I will put in the seven slot, which I know is my Q, which just from muscle memory with every class that I play, I know that that's my get out of dodge quickly skill if I need it. Um, and then what you'll, I'll put a utility skill here usually that's just, you know, it's just there to help with random things. And then an offensive utility skill I'll usually put on my nine, which goes to my R key, which helps me to just quickly um, map those things out in my head with whatever class that I'm playing, which helps again with the muscle memory. So we have some more questions. What do the devs think about confusion and retaliation? What is a recommended way to counter them? Uh, so we feel like right now, uh, retaliation, we feel like some specs actually have it a little bit too long. Um, so we're gonna be pulling that down a little bit. Uh, what we wanna have out of those things is the confusion and the retaliation. So let me explain those really quickly to everybody who doesn't know what they are. Um, maybe we have some people watching the stream who haven't played. Um, you'll notice I'm gonna put confusion on this guy. He's gonna take damage every time he activates a skill now. So that's going to do damage to him when he tries to hit our own, our own people or if he tries to get away and stuff like that and, or use a skill that's going to heal him. It's going to do damage to him. Retaliation is, is kind of the opposite of that. It says basically anytime you hit somebody um, who has retaliation up, you're going to take damage yourself. Um, so what these things are is that we want them to be kind of small windows where you have to really time them. And you control like when you say, I'm going I'm to wait, 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 and then now I'm going to throw this. So this is going to bounce back projectiles to the person. Um, that I have targeted. The, this is the same type of thing here. I'm watching this character. So he just went through an animation. He's about to go through another. So now I'm going to throw out confusion. So now I want to kind of time it so that I hit him with my confusion as soon as he starts going into his next animation for his next skill, which is what we want to try to get out of that. And um, we're still trying to make sure that those numbers are fair for everybody and fair for all the classes so that everybody has the equal play there that we want to have for all the classes. I, I really like this prop, actually. I'm kind of distracted a little bit. All right, so this is like the eighth time we're going to try to kill these guys. Let's see if we can do it. Let's go ahead and John, don't get too close. It's confusion up again. So John's just going to do crazy AOE damage. I'm going to do a Chaos Storm. Let's see if we can get out of here. I'm going to heal up. Let's go ahead and get a Shatter off. All right, we're doing a lot better this time. That's almost down, Jay. You got it, you got it, you got it, you got it. Okay, cool. John just revived off of that guy. So again, so I just moved right past this guy, I dodged, and then I used my left shift to target nearest, which keeps me from having to actually click on that character if there's a lot of stuff in the way. Um, which again goes back to the key bindings we talked about. So John should be good now. Alright. He's good. Finally. So now we can get our script back up and continue with this. Events. 
All right, more questions. Is cry frustration confusion just for, for small opportunity to do burst damage? Yes, it is actually. Um, a lot of times I, because I'm already specced into it too, I will go into my um, mind rack instead. Uh, mind rack is just going to be AoE damage. Um, cry frustration is also really good though because it's AoE as well. So if you have a lot of um, illusions up, John's talking to me. Open up change. Okay, John's changing up his traits a little bit. Um, what you want to do with this is you want to get some AoE um, in those situations. But the problem you have to be careful of is a lot of times the, the way that Mesmer plays is because of the pacing. If I shatter all of my illusions for one thing, I won't have them up for the next. So a lot of times what I want to do is just get out quick damage in those situations um, with my mind rack. Uh, but in this situation, so we'll summon and then we'll go ahead with the uh, cry. So now I've got confusion on both of these guys and they're going to go down pretty quickly. So yeah, bam. Uh, let's go over diversion really quick. This is going to allow me to daze my targets. This is a diversion. Now this is going to be used uh, if we're fighting really big characters or people who have really strong single attacks. You'll see me using that more uh, because it's going to be able to daze them out of their really really strong targets, their attacks. Um, if they or if you have a, um, an NPC or another player, if you're playing PvP or War vs World that has a really strong heal, what you'll want to do is you want to daze them out of their heal so that it resets the timer on it so that they're not going to be able to get their heal off when they need it. And you'll notice a lot of people will try to uh, manage their life totals and just make sure that they get off their heal when they want it. And if you can interrupt that heal, they're just going to go down a lot of times. So you really, really want to get used to using all of those. And then you saw me use the fourth one earlier, which is distortion, which just allows me to evade for, I get to evade for one second for each of my illusions that I shattered, so it can go from one second to three seconds. And then if you time that as, you know, use that, and then you have your dodges as well, and then you can flip back on somebody, and then you can teleport back out if you need to, or you can block, that kind of thing. You can really extend your, your life and your resource pool um, by using all these things in conjunction with one another. Yeah, so the thing that we have right now is we're asking a question about the combo types. So what you basically have is you have the ability to set up combos and then to finish combos. So what we'll be doing is you'll notice that sometimes John, if he gets up any firewalls or anything like that, you'll see me switch over and try to combo more off those with my illusionary duelist. Because the pistol shots will actually go through the flame wall and they'll actually start to add burning damage. Um, let's try to get him up real quick. Alright, he's back up. So let's do, let's do this. We're going to throw some confusion out on some people. Alright, let's let him eat some of that. Um, so what you want to do, like, and I have the the chaos storm, which is going to also be a finisher. Or sorry, it's going to be it's going to allow John to combo off of that. And we are just finally going to get past these guys right here. The way that the system works is everything is basically either going to open up a combo or it's going to finish a combo for you. So if John opens up a combo with a field, for instance, like the f the firewall, I want to have a finisher which is going to allow me to um, do something through that. So like for instance, if I did this here physical projectiles will be, so it's a 20% chance that everything that I throw out with that duelist is going to actually be able to proc off of his wall, if it's the flame wall for instance. So that's kind of how the combo system works. You have basically openers and you have finishers. Um, blast things do AOE, they add effects to the abilities and things like that. Um, Alright, cool. So we're going to keep following these guys, they're going to go into this cave. I don't know that that's a good idea for them, but apparently that's what they want to do. Oh, cool, cool, cool. So we are now inside of Scritzbergs. Oh, cute. Cute, cute, cute. You can do more questions if you want to, Ruby. We're kind of at a place where I feel like I can focus more because these guys I don't think will be as hard as the other ones were. Oh, until they start summoning these things. I don't know what that is. A veteran. Okay, it's a rampaging golem, which is, which is always good. Uh, let's go ahead and distortion out of that. All right, we need to pull him out. Pull out, yeah. We don't want to fight him in here. Yeah, because he looks pretty big and badass. Let's go ahead and shatter a little bit and see. So what we're thinking here is we're going to try to be careful because we can maybe deal with that big guy or the small ones, but both at the same time could be kind of dangerous, so we'll see. So we'll see if we can take him. Let's put some confusion on him. So John, as you can see, he's bouncing back and forth. He's using lightning to jump into the character. And yet, he's getting some chill off. Now, chill is going to snare it and make it so that it's harder for that character to move. And I'm going to put some more confusion on again. And then I'm going to put down a chaos storm, which John can combo off if he wants to. 
Yeah, damage looks like it's okay on this guy. Let's do more confusion, so I'm gonna shatter my illusions with my F2. Let's keep the confusion on, let's see how much damage he's gonna do. So that was poor timing on my part right there, if you saw it. He didn't warm up his skill until after the confusion was gone, which that's me not paying attention to that character well enough. I should have been watching his animations better. All right, so now we're gonna put on confusion again. Summon our duelist. Yeah, he's doing a lot of damage to himself now. Yeah, he should go down pretty soon. All right, we are gonna go ahead and shatter with an F1, just spike some more damage down. He's pretty low, John's looking at John's hit points. I think that we're fine in this fight. We should be able to finish this guy off pretty easily. You'll notice that a lot of times too, I'm not using my dodge bar very much. I'm trying to save it until I um, think that I'm in trouble. Now if I'm playing in a, in a, in a bigger team where I feel like I have um, more help from other people and I'm not gonna have to worry about myself as much, more support, you'll see me using my, my dodge more often because anytime that it's at full, you're not really using it, you know? So you wanna be kind of careful with that. You wanna use it whenever it's up. All right, some more questions. Will there be an extension to World vs. World, like fighting an awesome PvE when the team has the whole map? Not really sure I understand the question, but I can say that we are adding things to World vs. World um, as we speak. I can't say what those things are, um, but we are adding things as we speak to World vs. World. Um, I want to say more, but I, I shouldn't, especially with Regina in the room. She'll smack me if I say too much. So. Uh, let's just say that we are working on World vs. World, and we're adding things to that right now. Can you discuss the different combos? I'm scrolling down in chat now. Looks like I missed some questions. Can you explain the aggro, aggro, aggro table? It seems hard to hold mobs off of players. Um, so yeah, if I'm pulling a lot of aggro, it's based off the types of things like if I'm doing a lot of damage, um, it's his armor versus my armor. A lot of times in our game, a lot of you, you don't want to be pulling aggro like you would in other MMOs. A lot of times what you want to do is you want to be using CC on things uh, to control them off of your allies, uh, which is where the dazes come in, which is where this blind that I have right here comes in, which is where the ability to blind here comes in, which is where, I mean, all the stuff that you have over here with your confusions or if you're throwing chill and weakness onto people, that kind of thing. That's the kind of stuff you're thinking about more. And John, a lot of times, if he needs to, will be pulling things off of me, doing damage, knocking them back, knocking them down, that kind of stuff. So we're going to fight this ooze real quick. Okay, it looks like we might start wrapping up here pretty soon. Do you want to do one more question real quick? I, I can keep going if we need to. Let's keep get some more questions. It's, this is a, <laughs> it's a well-fed ooze. Good, I'm glad it's not malnourished because you hate to see a malnourished ooze in the world. All right, so. <laughs> great, great job, whoever named that. That's, that's, that's keen right there. All right, I don't think we can get in over here. So I'm telling John to push in. Another well-fed ooze. Man, these guys are just, just gluttonous down here. I don't know what's going on with these oozes. They might have like a safe way in here somewhere in Spitzberg. I don't know. Oh, nice job. We we totally did not die. Look at that. That's horrible. Neither one of us got out of that. That just shows you you're not playing well when that happens. Let's just, just spike him down. So what I did there was a different combo. Was was just all in offense, which was summoning first with my phantasm and then trying to, to time my confusing images to fire as soon as he got back up. As you, as you noticed, John had knocked the character back, which meant that I knew when it was going to be getting up. And then because I knew when it was going to be getting up, I could time the confusion to hit so that as soon as its first skill went off, it went off the same time as the illusionary duelist, which is kind of how you spike things, uh, which is just learning, again, all of your skills and different combos, learning how to play with just uh, leaving your hand on the WASD, and learning what all your hotkeys are. Oh, oh, just not even trying, John. I'm going to teleport out of that because I'm going to cheat. John can't do it. Button mushrooms. I don't think I've ever had button mushrooms. Sound good, though. So, Ruby, if you have any more questions, you can send them over real quick, and we'll start wrapping up with a couple of questions. And again, we just wanted you guys to, to, to see us playing the game, talk a little bit about how you, how you need to move, how
I need to set up your character, I need to set up your hotkeys. Um, you can, if you want to, just run through the game and just button smash. If, if you feel so inclined, we are not going to stop you. Um, but if you're playing well, you'll notice that there's a very high skill ceiling in the game. Um, you'll also notice when you're playing against another character, uh, sorry, another player in the, in the game, you'll notice that the difference between a good Mesmer and a bad Mesmer is night and day. A good warrior and a bad warrior is night and day. So we try to keep the game as simple as we can, but already we're, we're, when I jump in PvP, like there are people who are just so good already. Like they're just, you just, I just kind of grin when I get my ass kicked by them because I'm like, wow, these guys are really picking this up quick and it just really shows it's awesome. So there's a lot of skill to the game. It's, it's really fun to, to get your ass kicked in it and then to learn, okay, how do I deal with that guy next time? When I come back, what do I do? What are your plans and goals for developing GW2 as an eSport? Um, so as we said, we're going to be releasing a blog about a lot of our plans. Um, but the quick answer is basically we just want it to be as big as it can be. Um, we're not only interested in turning GW2 into an eSport. We just want to see eSports you know, in general grow. Like I'd, I'd love to see you know, GW2 um, bars. You know, I'd love to see people just playing GW2, and I'd love to see us... Um, able to really help the community get all the tools that they need to have an eSport and that's what we're working on right now is getting you guys all the tools that you need. Uh, we watch a lot of eSports here in the office, we watch a lot of different games. Uh, I came up in the eSport community so we, we know what you guys need and that's what we're working on right now to get you guys. Uh, also with World vs. World, we're trying to get a lot of tools in there and then we're adding some things that it's going to make it easier for you guys to World vs. World. So uh, again, I can't give you too many details right now, sorry. Um, but yeah, we are working on those things and we're just excited. Um, I know you guys haven't, you know, you're getting frustrated, you feel like, you know, we haven't added all the things you want, like, where is this, where is that, all that stuff, just, uh, we just want you to know that we're watching the forums, we, we listen, we are watching, um, it's just those things are, we like to talk about things when they're ready, and even though some things are close to being ready, we, we wanted to make sure that they were just completely tested and good to go before we showed them to you guys, um, but we do want to give you guys all the tools you need to make an eSport, so, and we will be supporting GW2 eSports for as long as GW2 exists, which we hope is a very long time, so. Uh, more questions. Will there be new spells you can purchase from vendors? New spells, um, I'm assuming you mean for classes, maybe? Um, right now, no, I mean with, with expansions, right, we will be adding some stuff. Um, but right now, there won't be new things that you can add. Uh, but there will be new things coming down the, down the pipe uh, once we're doing expansions and stuff like that, so. Yeah, just like any of our other games. We want to be careful. Um, we learned from, this is one of the, it's a great question actually, let's, let's dovetail into this. We learned in Guild Wars 1 that we had kind of option shocked our players. There was just so much that they could do with every single class combo that they just, new players were completely overwhelmed. And after a few expansions, people would just look at the classes and the combos and they said, I, this is just way too much to learn. So we're trying to do our best to keep that number low while also balancing with having a lot of depth for players. So that's kind of what we're focused on right now is making sure that, you know, as we go forward and as we add things, we don't add too much that we overwhelm our players. So John, as you can see, is getting hit by these guys over here. We're going to hit him. If he could get into this chaos storm, he would do better. So I'm going to go ahead and just stun those guys off of him. Just keep moving, Jay. Um, wow, one of those creatures is really big. All right, you can just focus that, Jay. All right, looks like that's the last question from Ruby. So just want to say thank you to everybody. I think we're going to start wrapping it up here. Sorry to John. Sorry that you're getting killed so much, bro. Too strong, bro. Um, just thanks for coming. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, like I say, we'll be getting out more information to you guys, and we're still working on a lot of the aspects of the game that you love. Um, we love it, too. We want it to be as the best game that it can be. Um, but at the same time, we are perfectionists, and we, we like to wait to show things until we feel like they're ready. But uh, thanks for all the support and all the interest, and uh, I think we're going to sign off now. So thanks, everybody.